Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. This might be strange for later viewers, but I hope you had a good time in your Christmas and New Year's holiday and of course a happy new year to you all. I decided to begin this new year with a very short one. As always, a disclaimer, as those always get longer than anticipated, but let's see how this is going. So in the newest version of Octane 2022.1, Wutoi has integrated an Asus tone mapping one-click solution, basically. Some time back, I made a video how to deal with Asus in Octane and how to comp it. This involved downloading an OpenColorIO config and linking it into Octane, which is a bit cumbersome and not for everyone. Also, there was this problem that when you just want to bake in the ACES look into your output files, if you're putting out, for example, TIFF sequences or PNG sequences that are 8 or 16-bit only, it was a bit of a hassle. And now with the inclusion of this one button solution, the process is much more streamlined if you're working with the sRGB ACES. So welcome to Cinema 4D and Octane Land and you see this laboratory equipment that is from a project I'm currently working on. So since I do not want to show you the same boring scene every time, I guess this is a good practice. As this is a one-click solution, this is very easy to do. So in your Octane settings, in the camera imager, you find this ACES tone mapping setting here. And if you tick it, you're basically done. But to not make this tutorial too short, let me explain a little bit around that. So the former way to go about this would be to enable you OpenColorIO here. So before you do that, you would have gone into settings, color management and link your OpenColorIO variable in here. Then let me go back to camera imager, OpenColorIO and set this one here to ACES sRGB. And then last but not least, you have to go to the drop down in your live viewer and also set this to OpenColorIO sRGB. And as soon as I do that, you see nothing has changed. And this is because now if you go back to the imager here and untick that and then go back to sRGB, you can see the old look. And this is the look that we get with the integrated old workflow. And if I go back and set this back to sRGB and then tick this, you can see the picture looks the same. So no more linking old OpenColorIO ACES files. You just have to tick this button here. Now, I still do it the old way, and this is because I'm used to using the Rec. 709 preset. And this gives me a little bit less crushed shadows, as you can see here. So the contrast isn't as strong as with the sRGB profile. And this is the whole reason I'm not using the one-click solution here. But if you before always worked with the sRGB profile, then there's no need to use the old way. You can just go to the imager and check this tick here. So let's go and go to the LDR sRGB again. So we are seeing the result of the ACES tone mapping checkbox. If you already know what ACES is doing, you can skip the next part here. So what I've done here is brought in another HDRI or just rotated it so you can see the effect better. Let me just load the other HDRI. So right now we are looking at the image with an sRGB, like the old way, the standard way that Octane has ever worked. And you can see that we get some blown out highlights and some oversaturation here in the blue areas. You might not notice this is oversaturated, but it is. And you can see it if I then tick the ACES tone mapping. So if I tick that, you can see the ACES tone mapping now gives you back the oversaturated color in a very nice way. And you can see details in the highlights that were just burned out into a cyan mass. 
And also the background is not overexposed anymore and the shoulder, meaning the way the image is looking from the normal to the highlight is very smooth in comparison to what you get with the old sRGB way. And this goes for the one-click solution as well as for the OpenColorIO config here. So there's no difference there. It's just made easier for you to get this new advanced look. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is how to export that to your image sequences or single image if you're rendering a still image. And basically this is very simple too. So let us go in the Cinema 4D settings here, activate Octane Render and then go into the Octane Render settings. Now dependent on what you want, there is this color space option here. So if you want your ACES to be baked into your output, just leave the color space as sRGB. You can leave that as HDR, it doesn't matter. I noticed some uh, color shifts or some banding if you set it to LDR 8-bit, so HDR is recommended here. Then another thing is, never output your images through the save option from Cinema 4D. Always output your renderer through the output options from Octane. This makes sure you're getting the right image profile with the image, because Cinema 4D sometimes can mess things up, mostly with a wrong gamma on your output. So let's say you want to output an 8-bit TIFF file with the ACES tone mapping baked in. So of course you enable that. Then you set a render path. Usually I go one folder back and save my image file into a folder that's called render and then name it after the scene file. And you can do that by using the render tokens in Cinema 4D, like this. Next, since we are wanting to save a TIFF, let's say select a TIFF file here. Here we go. Then we want to save it as 8-bit and we don't want to save it as a multi-layer file and of course we want to save the beauty because we only have the beauty right now and if this wasn't checked then no file will be saved. Okay, so let's try what we set here if everything worked out. There's some complex materials in the scene so it needs some time to update. So Cinema 4D right now expects a different color profile. This is why it looks a bit weird here, but we have to judge from the saved output. And if I bring in the saved output, you can see that the Cinema 4D is looking weirdly off. So it looks like it didn't apply the ACES tone mapping, but in the saved output from Octane, it did apply the ACES tone mapping. And you can see it is basically the same as in the live viewer. So as I said, don't trust Cinema 3D what it shows while rendering. Basically, if you're not sure if your rendering going to be the right output, just render one example with very few samples and then make sure that your output matches your live viewer. Now the next thing is, if you want to engage in an ACES color profile pipeline, so basically if you want to save out ACES AXRs, then you just have to deal with one more setting, and this is going back to main here, and instead of sRGB, just choosing the ACES CG profile here. And then when you render out, of course you have to take care that you want to render an AXR Octane. I always choose the DWAB compression, as you already know if you watch my tutorials, and then start this render process. And this then doesn't bake the ACES look into your output, but gives you an ACES CG EXR that you can then further composite in After Effects or Digital Fusion. If you're interested in the compositing part in After Effects, I already included this in my other tutorial and the workflow basically didn't change. There's a new After Effects version coming where they included the OpenColorIO so it's less cluttered and more streamlined. 
but it's still in beta and I've planned to make a tutorial about this when it's out as a stable build. Also, let me know in the comments if you want to see the Asus workflow using Blackmagic's Fusion Studio instead of After Effects. I'm more or less planning to switch to Fusion for my comp work. I used it before and I find After Effects is really not that great for compositing when it comes to EXRs and when it comes to a lot of layers. And it's eating my RAM away like a hungry teenager. Fusion seems to be much more optimized in that way and also has better color handling. Maybe I redo some of my things using that compositor. As promised, this was a rather short one. I guess this will help a lot of people that weren't interested in doing the complete ACES workflow with attached compositing part and just wanted to have the ACES look and just render that out without any compositing or just light retouching. All right, that concludes this tutorial for this week. Let me know if you have any idea or suggestion how to make those tutorials better or if you have any idea for future tutorials. So again, thank you very much for watching and happy checkbox checking. Bye.